Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again. And well, here we are again with a brand new update to BDJB. And this time it is working with those 9.00 PlayStation 4s. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the release notes here. So this release just dropped right at one hour ago. And in the change log here, what it states is, is that they added internal jar loader feature. So you can run jar files directly from the disk if you want to do that. Again, you can obviously send them over the network. And then it added a file proxy disabler, which is a feature so you can access the BDJ sandboxed file system using the Java file API. Now, while that is extremely interesting, it is a sandboxed file system. So you probably still want to stick with something like PS4 Explorer once you've gotten completely jailbroken. Okay, so for Labs 1.1, the absolute biggest thing is, is that they fixed the crash that was happening on 9.00 and 9.03. Anyways, today we will try this out on 9.00. The next thing that it says here is it changed how the USB payloader works. So now it will run from the USB path, not the data path, after copying the payload to the data path. Now, this might sound a little confusing, so let's go over to the detailed explanation. And this makes it a little bit more clear. So... With the two ISO releases, with the laps.iso, it says it automatically loads payload.bin in the USB, which would mean the root, and it copies it to the slash data slash payload.bin. Now it says that if that payload.bin is missing, then it launches a bin loader server on port 9020 to receive a binary payload. So there we go. That's a lot more clear. And it says that it also checks the mount USB 0 to USB 4. Previously, it only checked the first couple of USB ports. And now this time it's going all the way through number 4. Now again, you can come back over here for a detailed explanation. And again, support the developer if you would like to do so. Now down into the assets, laps 1.1.iso is what we are going to download. So go ahead and grab that. Now that one includes the remote jar loader. So you don't have to send that jar over manually. It just does everything right off of the disk. Grab the remote jar loader as well as laps.jar. I will include some information in case you want to send this over manually. So first off, let's go ahead and start working with the laps 1.1.iso and give this a shot on our PlayStation 4. Okay, so you probably know the drill by now, but we are going to use image burn here. For the source, I am going to pick laps 1.1.iso and I'm just going to go down here and press burn. Again, I will need to format the disk again as I've been burning a bunch of Blu-rays here lately. Okay, so the next thing you do want to do is to go ahead and grab gold in here. So if you go to this URL, you can select gold in 2.4 B18.5, for example, here. And you can put in a number that you would like to pay. And then you can just go check out now and then view content and now download. And it will download the very latest version. So go ahead and open up that 7-zip file with whatever you would like. And go ahead and connect a USB drive. In this instance, I have one connected here. And we're going to grab goldhen.bin and just copy it right there to the root. Once it is on the root, we are going to go to rename. And we're just going to give this the name of payload.bin. Okay, let's go ahead and get that plugged into our PlayStation 4 as well as insert the disk that we just created. Okay, so back over on my PlayStation 4, I've went ahead and inserted the disk, and I have also inserted my USB drive, which contains my payload.bin, and now I'm going to be testing on 9.00, since 
previously had been doing a lot of 12.02, which is exactly what the developer had been using. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's launch the Blu-ray disc here. Okay, and it looks like it completed successfully. Okay, so I did not see any gold hand pop-ups there. So let's go ahead and go back to our main menu and let's see what is happening. Okay, so right up there at the top, I can see that gold hand is now running on the system here. So I didn't get any of the pop-ups. So let's go over to settings and let's just scroll down to system, system information. And yes, we are completely jailbroken now. Very interesting that there was no pop-ups. Let's go ahead and try to launch PS4 Explorer here. Okay, so there is a pop-up coming from another tool. And we are going to go root access here. So yeah, it looks like at least some of the homebrew applications are working there. And we might as well go over here and try a game. Okay, so there we go. There is Contra running. Let's just go ahead and try our cheat menu. So yeah, there are our cheats and everything just like that. Okay, so I tell you what I want to do here. Let me go ahead and reboot and let's try this again. There it goes, and down at the bottom, this one has worked. So that is two of two times. This has worked with no problems whatsoever. So at this point, I should be able just to go ahead and go back again, and we will have Gold Hen running. So this is real time here. So right there we go, we get Gold Hen. Okay, so Gold Hen is definitely running on this 9.00 version even though at least on my system, I don't get any of the pop-up notifications. Let's go ahead and go back and explore the remote jar loader. Now, in case you don't want the completely offline version, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would work with the remote jar loader as well as the labs.jar. So go ahead and begin with by downloading the ISO image as well as downloading the jar file. Let's go ahead and load up image burn. Okay, so go ahead and load up the remote jar loader 1.2.iso, and we're gonna go ahead and write that to a disk, and then we will pick up from there. Okay, over on the PlayStation 4, when we put that disk in there, it does say Blu-ray disk, but let's go ahead and load up the remote jar loader 1.1. Okay, so up at the very top there, we can see it says jar loader listening on port 9025. Okay, so back over on your PC, I'm going to go ahead and use Netcat GUI for this one. Make sure you have your PS4's IP address in here, and the port here is going to be 9025. And for the laps.jar file, what I like to do here is I like to just come in here and go over to rename and change that jar here to just BIN. So go ahead and do that. And once that has been renamed, we're just going to put it right here in the payload paths. Okay, so again, we can see we have our PS4's IP address 9025 as it matches what is in the top left hand corner. And then we have laps. And we'll press inject payload here. Okay, and it works. Boom. We now have been able to successfully run this with the offline version as well as the remote jar loader. So there you have it, everybody. We have a, another great release here, and things are just heating up more and more in the PlayStation 4 scene. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one. Michael, out!